So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K24 Next Gen. In today's video, we have another rebuild from the trade deadline. It was quite a boring deadline, but this was one of the bigger moves that a team made. And it is the new look Dallas Mavericks with Daniel Gafford and P.J. Washington. I'll go over the trades a little bit more and kind of my full thoughts on the deals once we actually get into the video, but kind of my gut reaction and my kind of my take, if you will, from this is that the Dallas Mavericks think they are good enough to win now. They want to win. They know Luka Doncic is incredible. The guy's an MVP candidate. He's probably a top three player in all of basketball. And they did know as well that their roster was not good enough. They didn't think Grant Williams was going to be a main piece for them moving forward. That kind of big signing, if you will, of the offseason Kind of turned out to be a little bit of a bust. So they go ahead, make a couple deals. One, getting Daniel Gafford from the Washington Wizards. I think he's going to be a really good center for them. Now, will he start the entire season? Probably not. I think Derek Lively is still probably going to have that starting center spot. And then again, I think P.J. Washington is an upgrade from Grant Williams. So overall, well, I think they did a good job. I really do. I think this is a good move. Last thing you want to do is two, three years down the line, the roster's not looking any better. You piss off Luka Doncic, next thing you know, he's requesting a trade. So I give props to the Dallas Mavericks front office here. I really do. And unfortunately, since the deadline was so boring, we're not really going to have any other rebuilds. I mean, if you can think of anything that was kind of crazy, I mean, I did the New York Knicks one on Friday. I'm doing the Dallas Mavericks one today. But if besides that, there's really no like blockbuster moves that I really could do. So I don't like boring trade deadlines. It is what it is. This was just one of those years. But yeah, really good job to the Dallas Mavericks. Our goal is to get them a championship today. Of course, we are past the trade deadline right now, so no other moves can be made for year one, if you will. But this team at 30 and 23 is very much still in contention and in play in the Western Conference. And of course, led by an MVP candidate. So let's talk about this roster a little bit. Luka Doncic, he's 24 years old. He's a 97 overall. He's one of the best players in basketball. I mean, there's really no ifs, ands, or buts about that. He's just absolutely incredible to watch. He's going to be a building block here for us today. Shooting guard spot. Kyrie Irving came over in a deal, obviously, last year around this time. We're coming up on that one-year anniversary. I think we're actually past that at this point. But Kyrie is still incredible, even though oh, he is 30 years old, 31 years old. But law likelihood not going anywhere today. Tim Hardaway Jr. Actually been playing some pretty good basketball this year. you got to give the man some credit. He really is. I really do think he's probably having a really good season. So he's going to likely be here. For one, maybe two seasons. I'm not going to guarantee anything, but I do like THJ. We'll work on it. Uh, Jaden Hardy, he's only 21. I still think there's a little bit room for development there. We're going to have to figure out kind of where he fits on this team. Maybe he plays the backup point guard spot. I'm not really sure where. Again, we'll figure that out. Small forward spot. Dante Exum, I don't know. Maybe, could I dare say, having like a little bit of a resurgence, if you will, for his career? Was he really shooting 47% from three after 18% the year before? Oh, my God. Oh, that's actually 21. What the fuck? Okay. Uh, Josh Green is here. I know he was like kind of like a key piece, if you will. I think the Charlotte Hornets wanted him in any sort of deal for P.J. Washington. Clearly, the team's agreed to you know terms without that actually being the case. But he's going to be a really good rotation piece for us for the remainder of this video. Power forward spot. New addition here in P.J. Washington. Again, I really think he fits this team well. A little bit better than what Grant Williams did. I mean, that signing started out, I think, really well and then... Kind of just tailed off. It's the Grant Williams experience. I'll just tell you that as a Celtics fan. But I do feel bad for Grant, but not really. The guy's getting paid a lot of money. So uh, Derek Jones Jr. is here. High flyer. This guy could definitely be a rotation piece. Oh, Max probably won't play a lot here in year one. I actually probably sent him to the G League. I just, again, don't really think there's many minutes. And then Markeith Morris, I actually didn't really even know you were on the team. Uh, center spot, Dan Daniel Gafford. Derek Lively, excuse me, has been fantastic in his rookie campaign. 100% a building block for this team at only 19 years old and an 80 overall. Already Daniel Gaffer, a little bit of an insurance policy, if you will. Really, really good quality center. He's going to be a tremendous backup center option for us here. Again, only 25 years old. We have Dwight Powell, who I have literally zero interest in. Maxi Kleba can obviously space the floor if needed. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I think there's a couple different directions we can go with this rotation. Clearly can't make any more moves right now, but I have some. Hang with me. I have finalized the rotation here for year one. This is the way I kind of want to do it to continue and finish out this season. I don't know if this is the smartest rotation because it does not have the highest overalls at every position. Actually, it's really just Josh Green, but I'm keeping him in the starting lineup. I think he fits with this group well. So Luka and Kyrie clearly going to be the backcourt here. Green is going to be our three. Now, again, as I just talked about, he's not the highest overall, but I'm, I'm thinking kind of long-term potential-based him, Dante Exum, it's going to be Josh Green. That's just my pick. So maybe I'm wrong. It's the one I'm going to go with, though. Uh, PJ Washington here at the four. Again, I really like what he provides to this team. Just from like a physicality, rebounding standpoint. And he does a lot of things really well. He's underrated. So I'm excited to have him here as our starting four. And then Derek Lively going to be our starting center. Funny enough, the minutes might not show up. But the game actually wants Gafford to start over Lively. It's not going to happen. But 
It's kind of funny. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. will be my sixth man off the bench. I considered starting him at my small forward spot, ultimately deciding kind of lead that second unit and be a spark plug in scoring, if you will, as the sixth man off the bench. Daniel Gafford right behind him. You got Dante Exum in here, Derek Jones Jr. And then Jaden Hardy, I moved from the two to the one. I know maybe he's not really a point guard, but... Who gives a shit? Luka Doncic is going to be the point guard. 35 minutes out of the night. So that's it, man. Um, I think, again, this team at 30 and 23 can definitely be fun. I don't know if we're going to beat, you know, some of the really good teams in the West, but I'm excited. I'll see you guys at the end of the first season. 15-32. That is the record here at the end of, I guess, half of year one that we had actual control of this team. But 50 wins, typically a good threshold for how I kind of like to measure my teams, if you will. And uh, yeah, it's not bad. For a season, we really didn't have much say in this roster. Nicole Jokic, that is a third career MVP. Victor Wembanyama, Rookie of the Year in San Antonio. Russell Westbrook, sixth man. Victor Wembanyama, also Defensive Player of the Year in his first season. Jalen Johnson, Shea Gildas, Alexander, and Joe Mazzulla, Coach Most Improved. You got, you guys get it. Um, all right, let's check it out. Where did we fall in the standings? We are oh the three seed. I didn't think fifty wins was going to take the three seed, but that's great improvement. Right you now, right now, are the Dallas Mavericks eight? Top three team in the West. I don't know if I'd quite put them that high, but good to see that we had a really strong second half, boosted all the way up to that three seed here. And now here's a look at the East. We would have been the three seed in the East as well. Um, here's some numbers. I'm pretty sure everybody probably played fan. Well, yeah, I mean, how is this guy not in the MVP conversation? Look, I know Nicole Jokic was fantastic, but it's a pretty good damn season if I do say so myself. Kyrie Irving was a really solid number two option. Tim Hardaway Jr., PJ Washington, Gafford, Green, Jones, Lively, Hardy, and XM boards is going to be Luka and assists. You guessed it, Luka Doncic. All right, man, round one, Minnesota Timberwolves, who have kind of taken a fall from grace, if you will. I mean, kind of in that conversation for number one seed. They've held that spot for a good chunk of this season. They have fall all the way to the sixth seed. And, uh, I mean, I'm not going to say this team is going to be any sort of walk in the park. I mean, maybe as a sixth seed, you kind of expect that, but they're very, very good. And uh, it should be a fun series. We're 1-1 right now with them. We go up 2-1, up 3-1. We close them out in five. We dropped the first game on our home floor, win four straight. We are on to the Western Conference semifinals. You have two MVP candidates going at it right here. Nicole Jokic, Luka Doncic, obviously Jamal Murray, just a fantastic player, especially come playoff time. Michael Porter Jr. fits his role very well. Aaron Gordon's incredibly underrated. I still don't think he gets the credit he deserves. But um, can we def knock off the defending champs? Let's see. Is it possible? We're down 2-1, down 3-1. We lose in five. A little bit of a disappointing, a little bit of a heartbreak ending, if you will, is going to be a Clippers and a New York Knicks final. And the Knicks getting it done. Jalen Brunson, finals MVP. Okay, wow, LeBron, nope, you're not retiring. I'm um, sorry. I know some people like it, some people don't. It is what it is. Uh, Hall of Fame, no jersey retirements. Blake Griffin called it a career. He's not on the team right now, I don't think so. Um, draft lottery, that Houston pick, I don't know what the actual protections are on it. I'm not going to pretend that I do. It says we should have the ninth overall pick right now. I'm actually going to check that and make sure we actually should. I don't want to have a pick we're not supposed to. Um, all right, Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd is a very interesting coach. I don't think he's in, like, the upper echelon of coaches, but I don't think he's done enough for me to fire him. He is in the last year of his contract, so I'm going to let him play it out. If he's not good next year, we're not good. Maybe he doesn't come back. If we have a really strong season, maybe I'll give him some money. Uh, first and foremost, I do have to check and make sure we actually do have this draft pick because I definitely don't want to screw that up. I think we should be able to use this draft pick. Now, I'm looking it up right now. This pick might have been involved in one of the trades. I don't know if it was Gafford or Washington, but what I'm reading right now, just looking at protections of Houston's future first-round picks, Houston's 2024 first-round pick to Oklahoma City protected selections one through four. If this pick falls within its protected range and therefore not conveyed, then Houston will convey its 2025 second to Oklahoma City. So I'm not really sure how the pick ended up here in Dallas. I'm assuming it was probably one of those big trades. Maybe this website just isn't updated yet, but it's here. I'm going to use it. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be, but... Again, I think the ninth overall pick is definitely a big asset for us. So, um, yeah, I don't mean to cut out again immediately, but I'm going to do exactly just that as I do figure out kind of what I want to do in the direction I want to go with with this draft pick. This is not a trade with our draft pick, but this is a trade for Mikel Bridges. I think he'd be a fantastic addition to this starting five. I'd love to have him take over as my starting small four. This is my trade offer right now. Dante Exum, Dwight Powell, Maxi Kleba. All three of these guys actually have to be in here to make the money work. You want to know how frustrating this is. We are $600,000 off of actually making the money work on this deal. So looking at the roster, I could have maybe given up Hardy, but ultimately they're the same age. Omax wasn't in the rotation. 
I don't want to trade him, but here in 2K, he's not going to have time to develop. I can live with it. So I'm actually surprised that went through straight up. And we still have the ninth overall pick. So I'm going to draft somebody. I'm not sure exactly what position it's going to be. I'm super excited to have Bridges here. So our starting five is pretty much figured out. Um, I don't need the last pick in the draft. So if we can just thank you very much, Philadelphia. Um, all right. So let's just see who's available for us here at number nine. We'll take a look at the summary. Alexander Saar, Buzelis, Walter. Bradshaw Saloon. Okay, we have a couple options here, I think. So, Stefan Cassell jumping out at me. Donovan Klingen. Don't really need a backup center. Nikola Topic could be very interesting for me. He's a guy I think is projected to be top three in most of the mock drafts I'm seeing right now. And I think he would fit behind Luka Doncic relatively well. It's not a guy I really have ever drafted before. So, Nikola Topic, welcome to the team. Second, Nikola has entered the NBA. He's going to be our backup powerful or for a backup point guard behind Luca, and uh, it's an upgrade, I would say. Um, other than that, we don't really need to qualify any of these guys right here, and we enter a free agency where it doesn't really appear that we have many major guys in free agency, if you will. So uh, Bridges jumps up to that small forward spot, kind of completing the big three, if you will. And at this point, it's basically just figuring out the depth and some of the directions we want to go because we do have some decent depth on this team. Clearly, maybe besides the backup power forward spot. So, really what I think it's going to come down to right now for that backup power forward spot is who do I want to move forward with? Is it going to be Jaden Hardy or is it going to be Tim Hardaway Jr.? Because I don't really know the answer. Because, again, I do think that Tim Hardaway Jr. is the better player right now. But I know we're going to see some regression. So, I have to be careful. I have to analyze all my options here. I mean, the power forward options actually aren't that bad. You know, do I take a flyer on a guy like Obi Toppin? I think I do. I think I'm going to do so. We have the money, might as well. You know, is he going to be an upgrade over everybody we could possibly trade for? I think the answer to that question is yes. So, you know what, Obi Toppin, welcome to the team. We're actually building a really nice team that I think, again, fits really well together. So, um, unfortunately, there's really just not a defined role here for Jaden Hardy. I think I'll probably hang on to Tim Hardaway Jr. Again, we're going to see some slight regression, but only 32. If he was like 34, maybe even 33, I'd consider a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I think, honestly, I mean, is Hardy expiring? Um, he is. <sighs> I might trade him. I don't want to. I mean, actually, you know what I could do? Unless there's somebody here that's, like, significantly, not significantly, but, like, younger, a little bit more upside that I think I can kind of move forward with. No. No. No, no, no. None of these are moving me. They, they're really not. All right, unfortunately, that probably means the time here in Dallas for Jaden Hardy has come to an end. I don't want to trade him. I would rather keep him, but I don't run 11-man rotations. I never have, and it's not a day really to make an exception. So, I don't know who here. I mean, again, he's expiring. If it wasn't expiring, I'd hang on to him. But two first-round picks from the San Antonio Spurs, it looks like a pretty good deal to me. I'll see you guys at the start of year two. Our first full season is here. We are ready to go. We've made some kind of major upgrades to this team, if you will. And I like it. I think this group is good. I think we have depth. And most importantly, you know what I'm going to say? Quality depth. Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving remains the backcourt. New addition here of Mikel Bridges at the three. Again, I think he fits this team really well. A little bit of defense to this backcourt is obviously not going to hurt. And... I don't know. I think he's a good fit. Uh, Washington and Lively is going to be our front court. I'm surprised I'm not seeing Washington's overall jump up a little bit. I mean, I know he's not necessarily you know a super young prospect, but the numbers are still here. That's really all I care about. Bench unit. Tim Hardaway Jr. remains the sixth man. Really didn't see any regression, so actually kind of better than I expected. Daniel Gafford remains our backup center. Obi Toppin was obviously brought in free agency. He's going to be our backup power forward. Josh Green went from starter to ninth man. That's, again, unfortunate, but... No, you're not starting over Bridges. And then Nikola Topic, our ninth overall pick, going to be backup point guard. So this team's good. Again, I think this team can make a run. Obviously, last year's playoff was disappointing in the way it ended, but this team's definitely going to be better this year. I, I fully believe that. I'll see you guys at the end of year two. A fourth career MVP for Nikola Jokic has happened. I mean, that's just absolutely insane. 55 and 27 is our record here to end year two. Five games better than last year is obviously improvement, but we're more worried about the playoffs. Ron Holland, rookie of the year. He's a Philadelphia 76er. CP3, six man of the year. He's got to be, what, 40, 39. Victor Wembanyama, another deep point. Men Thompson, most improved. Steph Curry, clutch player of the year. Jason Kidd does win coach of the year. Okay. Maybe that's a good sign. You can see we're the one seed there. Here's a look at the full standings. I'll take it. It's the best record in all basketball. Again, hopefully translates to the postseason. Luca had to be an MVP candidate once again. I'm actually surprised he didn't get it with numbers like this and considering we had the best record in the league, but that's fine. Uh, Mikel Bridges emerged as a really nice kind of third option for this team, if you will. Now, some other guys' numbers maybe went down, but I'm not necessarily too worried about it. So, uh, yeah, let's just get into it. Who do we have round one? It's going to be the San Antonio Spurs. Two-time defensive player of the year, Victor Wembanyama. rest of the group here is still relatively young. I mean, he's young as well, but you understand what I'm saying. So, um, this team doesn't really scare 
scare me too much here. Come round one, I think we're probably going to win with ease. And yeah, we do just that. All right, West Semis. This is where we lost last year, but we are facing the team we beat in round one last year in the Minnesota Timberwolves. They have 74 overall, DeLon Wright starting. Anthony Edwards, Jaden McDaniels, Carl Anthony Towns. You got Rudy Gobert, Nas Reed. Nikhil Alexander Walker. Again, I think they're they're good. I just I think we're better. I I really do. So we're up three one right now. Three two. Don't do this. Okay. West Finals. Us in the Denver Nuggets. Four time MVP Nikola Jokic. This is the team we lost to last year. We're looking for a little bit of revenge right now. Can that happen? I don't know. We start out really well. Two zero lead. Make it a three zero lead. Make it a clean sweep. But we're going to seven with the Timberwolves. Alrighty, looks like we are taking on Donovan Mitchell in the Cleveland Cavaliers here in the NBA Finals, who have a very, very good team. I mean, this starting five is clearly elite, almost all elite. Kelly Oubre, Karis LeVert, got Kelly Olenek here. So this team is good. I don't know. Okay, don't do this. Don't, don't do this. Okay, we tie it up 2-2. Two, two. Go down 3-2, so big game back in Cleveland. We're fighting for our playoff lives here. Got to win this one to keep the series alive and send it back to Dallas. And it looks like we're going to be doing just that. Yes, we're good. All right, game seven here in Dallas. Can we win two straight and get a championship in year two? It is a back and forth ball game right now. We are hanging on. It is a one point game and they're just, what the fuck? What is this fourth quarter, right? Look at that. What is that? I, that's, that's, a, you have scored. We are over nine minutes into the fourth quarter. And you just scored five points in a game seven. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, we lost. Oh, now you want to wake up? Fuck you. That's just... That's disgusting. That's just... It's sad. Not Donovan Mitchell. The series. It's just fucking putrid. LeBron officially calls it a career. I cannot override his retirement twice. Staff retirements. Hall of Fame. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have a big decision to make. Um, oh, was that Draymond? Wow, Draymond retired. Wow, I'm surprised he's not in the Hall of Fame. He would be. He will be. Um, I'm going to have a big decision to make regarding Jason Kidd and, and you know, kind of what I want to do with him and his future with this team. And I actually don't know the answer, so it's style for day. It is. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't often fire a head coach that, um, you know, goes to Game 7 of the Finals, but I stand by what I said. I don't think Jason Kidd is necessarily... I'll, I'll say it like this. I don't think he's the worst coach in the world, and I definitely don't necessarily think he was the problem. But I don't think he's the answer, right? I, I think if that makes any sort of sense. So um, I definitely don't need all these draft picks. So if anybody wants to just, I just, just give me some fucking future first round pick. Please, just a future first. I thought this game makes everything so challenging. Okay, team player options right now. Uh, Kyrie is going to be a big free agent for us. Have to make sure we get him back. Uh, other than that, I don't really think there's many major moves. Tim Hardaway Jr. is probably going to be a sign-and-trade candidate. He's been good for us, but now I do really expect to see some regression. So um, if we can maybe work on something there, I'd be very excited about it. So let's work on a trade. If we want any sort of trade to work, we're probably going to have to overpay, and it's the final regular season, so that's fine. But uh, yeah, I think Case and Wallace would come in here. Both 79 overall shooting guards, but one's trending upwards, the other is probably trending downwards a little bit, as much as I hate to say it. So I'd love to add Case and Wallace to this team in terms of draft picks. I have a few I can give up. You can take whatever you want. I'm not making any other changes. And for those of you asking, you know, why am I not upgrading, you know, a, a PJ Washington where, you know, I don't really think it's necessary, but I'm sure some people are asking it. Um, mostly just because it's kind of like his video, if you will. So that's kind of most of the reason I'm not doing it, but I still think he's good. And I think, I still think he fits this team well. All right, we went to Game 7 of the Finals last year, choked the shit out of it on our home floor. New head coach, new season, let's do it. There will be no changes in the starting five here for our third and final regular season. We had an absolutely heartbreaking ending last year on our home floor at Game 7 and came out and just laid an absolute fucking goose egg in the fourth quarter. So um, we're out and we're looking for revenge. That's basically the simplest way to say it. Luka, Kyrie, Bridges, Washington, Lively. Ben Junior has seen some pretty good upgrades. I'll say that. Cason Wallace, game's recommending. I have him as my sixth man playing 27 minutes, or excuse me, 26 minutes a night. Not going to be quite that high, but he definitely will be the sixth man here. Nicola Topic is developing quite nicely behind him. Daniel Gafford, Obi Toppin, and Josh Green. Funny enough, the game actually wants Obi Toppin to start over P.J. Washington. I'm not going to do that, but 
Hopefully it doesn't come back and bite me in the ass. I don't know. That's all I'll say. I will see you guys at the end of the final regular season. It's about damn time. I mean, that's all there really is to say. Luka Doncic does get an MVP award. You see, some of the numbers are a little down, but I don't give a shit because we won 70 games and Luka won an MVP and hopefully soon to be a championship. Ace Bailey, Rookie of the Year. He is in New York. Jalen Duran, Sixth Man of the Year, is somehow in Utah now. That is three straight de Defensive Player of the Year awards for Victor Wembanyama. Craig Porter Jr., most improved. He's a Cavalier, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, LaMelo Ball, Clutch Player of the Year. Stalford does get Coach of the Year. So new head coach, couple new additions. This team is firing on all fucking cylinders right now. 61 wins for the Thunder. I'm actually surprised we've really kind of yet to run into them in the playoffs. So MVP, Luka, let us in scoring. Kyrie Irving, Mikel Bridges, Washington, Topic, Lively, Toppin. Oh, and really a Topic and Toppin. That's funny. All right, man. Uh, rebounds a game was Lively, assists, Luka. Okay, round one. Let's just do this thing. Pelicans here. They're good. They're they're not going to. Is that Bruce Brown? It is. Um, thanks for coming. That's I, Okay. Portland Trailblazers, young, up and coming with Chris Middleton and a fantastic human here in Miles Bridges. <laughs> Rob Will, Scoot Henderson, and Bradley Beal. Holy shit. Okay. Bradley Beal and Jeremy Grant are probably taking up like 70 million other cap space by themselves. That's fucking hilarious. All right. We sweep. Uh, moving on to the Thunder here. We knew we were going to see him at some point. I'm surprised again it took this long. Oh, I forgot. We traded them Tim Hardaway Jr. Who actually really didn't regress, but Casey Wallace is still better, but that's strange. Good to know. Um, all right. It is Western Conference Finals time. We have only lost one game throughout the playoffs so far, and that stands true. It is a rematch of last year's finals. It is us and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Mitchell Robinson somehow there now. I want to win. I want to win, and I stand by that, and we're up 3-0, and it looks like we're going to be able to do so. So we head here to Cleveland for what could be a closeout game. Yep. Just run them off the fucking floor. I don't want to do this. Thank you. Continue, and I think we shoot. Okay. I'll see you guys in there. So far, the Cavs have scored 24 points here in the fourth quarter. We have scored 15. I checked before just to make sure. Uh, yeah, so fourth quarters clearly aren't our thing here, especially against the Cavaliers. Luka gets that tough layup to go, making it a three-point game with 2.05 left here. And what could be a closeout game? So, the 40 and 10. God damn. All right, let's just do this thing again. Why is Evan Mobley playing the shooting guard position? What is this fucking lineup they have going on right now? Okay. I don't know. All right. Um, okay, back to a one-point game. Just less time on the clock. I am just going to hopefully abuse Darius Garland, and respectfully, of course, with Luka Doncic here. Yeah, thanks for coming, pal. Way to use the body and just kind of control him out. That's what I'm talking about. Back to three points we go. It's just back and forth and back and forth. We're basically trading punches. Got to make sure the starters stay in the game right now. I wouldn't want anybody else in here. And uh, yeah, Mikael Bridges, can we lock down somebody? I don't really want you on Max Struess. No disrespect to Max Struess, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, Donovan Mitchell takes a three and he... God damn it. Fuck. Well, we're tied. We are tied. We are... Can I go... What? Hello? Thank you. Jeez, I don't care about some schmuck sitting in the stands in Cleveland. Okay. Let's run a pick. Give me a screen, Derek Lively. Good, good. Luca, just no contact? I didn't even get a shot meter. Oh my god, I am choking. I am choking. Okay, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where's Luca going? I don't know who the fuck I'm supposed to be on right now. Okay. How we keep switching these rotations are killing me. God damn it. I'm lost. Like, the arrow kept pointing differently. I understand I'm probably not on the right person, but I'm just, I'm getting screwed right now is what's going on here. This is... Sorry. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. All right. Jared Allen of the free throw line can possibly take the lead here for Cleveland. He does just that. And uh, we're going to be in a position that I'm not very happy with. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys. So second free throw for Jared Allen is up. No good on the second attempt. That is big. Irving, three. Good. Oh, my God. Kyrie. 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 Let's fucking go two-point lead let's play some defense Kyrie Irving having a tough night so far good to see that three went down oh my god I thought that was going in it looked like it had the projection to go right in all right we gotta waste some clock right now but we gotta be smart a two-point lead does not mean the game is over but another basket could be very very kind of big for us if you will I'm gonna call for the screen from Washington we're gonna take it here Luca Luca oh my god what are you doing where's the help where is the help you're all completely fucking clueless. Why is Jared Allen not sliding on that earlier? I don't know, but this is big. Four-point game. It's a two-possession game. Okay, I gotta... How is that even possible? Oh, my God. Yes, thank you, foul, Luca. Oh, my God. We are... Oh, wait, they didn't... Now we're in the bonus, are we? No, we're not. Okay. 
They're going to foul again, I'm assuming. Yeah, they are. All right, we have to be... Yeah, we're in the bonus. Okay. First free throw for Luca up and good, giving him 45, 10, and 4 on the night. Man, just taking over the MVP here. Second free throw up, second free throw good. They're going to take a timeout, I'm assuming. No? Okay. Let's just get back and play some good defense. I'm not playing on ball defense against Donovan Mitchell. He's cooked the shit out of me this entire game so far, and he continues to do so even when I'm not on him. That's an easy bucket. That's too easy. Uh, obviously, I want to get Luca the ball here. Turn! Holy shit. I don't know why these guys take so long this fucking game. All right. I think, honestly, you know, two more free throws, it's probably out of reach, realistically. Uh, did I break that? Okay, I didn't. 47 points for Luka Doncic. Can we make it 48 and close this fucking thing out? Thank you. All right. Now they're taking their time out, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just curious what a defensive lineup would look like. I'm assuming it's probably a lot of our starters. Maybe a couple guys switch. Yeah, it's, I mean, Case and Wallace and for Kyrie. I'm not going to do that. We're just going to keep everybody in. All right, starters staying in the game. We are on the verge of closing out the Cavaliers, sweeping them out of their own building. I want to double Donovan Mitchell. I do not want him to get the basketball. Okay, I tried. Um, honestly, I should have Mikel Bridges on Mitchell. That's a bad foul. That's a bad foul. I should have put, I don't know why I'm not adjusting who is covering who, because clearly, no disrespect to Kyrie Irving, but him covering Donovan Mitchell is probably not exactly ideal. I think I'd rather have Bridges on him, but Mitchell to the stripe for two. I mean, I guess that's better than a possibility of him hitting a three, so I, I'll take it, but um, it could potentially be a four-point game here once again. It is. I'm not taking a timeout. They're going to probably foul me again, which is fine. It's going to maybe even give Luka 50 points on the night which is always a fun way to end it. So let's go to the free throw line. Try to get Luke at a 50 points. First one is up and good. He's got 49. We are one point away from 50 points for our MVP. So, oh my God, I bricked it. Oh my God, no, I didn't. Holy shit. Okay, 50 points for Luka Doncic on the night. He's on the verge of a finals MVP. Donovan Mitchell is still cooking Kyrie. He's going to miss that one. We're good. It took a while, but we finally got that championship here. And as suspected, Luka Doncic is your finals MVP. All right, man. What a way to end it. I was definitely stressed out throughout this video. But we put together a really good team. I think, again, a team that fits really well together. And, uh, yeah, I'm very happy. So I hope you guys enjoyed as well. I'm sure this video has been long enough, so I'll keep this short. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's probably no more trade deadline rebuilds. There was really no other moves that kind of required a rebuild, if you will. So... Um, if there's anything you really want to see, let me know and we'll think about it. But other than that, let me know any other video ideas down below in the comment section because we're always looking for them. That's it for me. As always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.